Hi, I'm Molly from CPCAB. During these extraordinary times, many of our tutors and students are using the internet in ways that we never have before. So today we thought it would be useful to just pause and reflect to consider how safe we are in our systems of communication. I'm going to be talking to Derek about some key elements of e-safety. Hi Derek. Hello Molly. Hi. Um, first of all Derek, what, what do we mean by e-safety? I think uh, realistically we can look at that in, in a number of different areas. So how safe are we online, how safe are our clients online, our students, uh, and how safe are the platforms and the technology and the other practical aspects that support our industry, how safe are they from a point of view, I guess, really, of trying to make things um, as safe and appropriate as possible. Yeah, thanks. It's, it's really important to understand quite what we mean by that. And, and I'm wondering, what sort of things do counselling tutors and students particularly need to think about? What, what are they doing on at the moment? I guess if we were to look at the range of things that counselling tutors and students are doing online, we can probably split it down into, firstly, if we look at the study, they'll be taking part in skills online, they'll be doing presentations, they'll be taking part possibly from level four at process and encounter groups. So from that perspective, and also there'll be interactions the students will be having with each other in various groups and forum online. So from a study perspective, which is perhaps one of three, I think that we can consider those are possibly the main areas. If we look at students at level four who are participating in client work, then it's a case also of client sessions being carried out online supervision being carried out online, appointments being booked online, and also note taking and the recording of information and training as well. So that's another area. And the third area probably is our personal interaction online, which for many of us as counsellors and tutors and students can have an impact uh, on, on, on other areas when it comes to our our digital presence or our digital footprint, which we can look at a little bit more. Thanks, Derek. It's really important to highlight the key areas, isn't it, which involve not only what happens in the counselling training context, but what was also happening personally as well for, for those tutors and students. I wonder if it's useful for us just to identify and describe and explain perhaps some of those sort of key um, terms that we're hearing a lot about and, and understanding a bit more about what they actually mean. Yes, I, th I think it is worth looking at some of those and to understand that some are new, some are not, and in some cases the applications have altered. So if we look at the platforms that people will now start to becoming familiar with, or in some cases start to use differently, we could be talking about Zoom, Team, WhatsApp, FaceTime, all of these different areas that people are starting to become more familiar with. Um, and if we look at the concepts of CPD and webinars and chat rooms and forums, these again are areas that are becoming much more relevant. I guess if we consider from a number of perspectives, we've got professional counsellors and in some cases that will include our tutors who are already working uh, online and with different medium other than face-to-face. -face. We will now have our level four students in some cases seeing clients online and using this variety of platforms and making choices about them. And of course, we may see that this continues when we return and we may see that it becomes a more entrenched part of our industry. Yeah, thank you. It's happening now, isn't it? What are, what are the key risks, do you think, um, in some of these areas? What do we need to be looking out for mostly? I think if we start from the basic area of risk, which is not necessarily applicable to us, but not to make too many assumptions, ensure that our, our networks are safe in terms of internet access and that we have uh, password access, 
these sorts of things, which sometimes people take for granted, and ensure that the people we're engaging with are using safe networks. Have that awareness that we always have tried to have around opening unsolicited attachments or going to unsolicited web URLs through emails we receive. And I think really in terms of safety, also ensuring that we have an understanding and a strategy in place through training, through supervision on how we manage ourselves online, which is very, very critical. There's a key link, isn't there, between our uh, professional and our personal lives and how we maintain confidentiality and how we ensure that we are behaving uh, professionally and safeguarding clients that we're working with and also the profession as a whole. What other platforms um, might we be at risk from um, uh, getting into difficulties um, in those areas? I think one of the things that somehow we need to accept is the, in terms of confidentiality, so negotiating our therapeutic agreements in, in one case with, with clients, in terms of confidentiality, everything alters considerably. So the suggestion that we can absolutely guarantee confidentiality with online platforms. It's very, very difficult. And there have been some quite critical legal cases in the past that, that would review that. But also, we can ensure that we manage our environment. So I hope this is an example. I hope that as you and I are conducting uh, this engagement, this interaction, there won't be a lot of other people walking around overhearing us, listening to us and disturbing us. And mm -hmm. this can be the case as well, whether it's when we're speaking to clients or in supervision, or actually engaging in some of our exercises for the, the training and education. In terms of, I won't say anonymity, but inadvertent disclosure, I think perhaps might be a, a better way to review it. Um, it's, it's not necessary to have too many um, specific identifying personal aspects on show if we're counselling clients from a home environment that we've created. Um, but one of the key areas, I think, is to consider the technology we use, the quality of that technology, our competence with that technology, and to have a contingency plan in place if that technology fails. And I think probably the, the mirror image to that is not to make too many assumptions that the people we're engaging with have the same level of knowledge and understanding of that technology. So those things will need to be revisited and reviewed and agreed. It's really important to have those conversations with the people that we're communicating with, whether they are other students, our tutors, uh, clients that we might be working with, to understand the systems that we're using and make sure they're as safe as possible. I think so. I mean, we could take it from sort of a, the simplest application. So uh, either myself or yourself, in this case, accidentally muting our microphone and not, being a, not having the knowledge of how to unmute it um, and thinking that the other person can still hear us. And that could have a very, very powerful impact on the dynamic of the relationship. Or the internet connection dropping out, the software application failing so i could perhaps agree uh, a contingency with you now that if suddenly for some reason our internet drops out that we can contact uh, by telephone by an undisclosed telephone number whatever is the best and most appropriate way to do that because if i was working online with a client in this environment and there was a particularly difficult experience that we were sharing and suddenly the technology failed, then it would be important that both myself and the client, both you, you and I, will understand and will have agreed what we will do under those circumstances. Yeah, that um, highlights really, doesn't it, the importance of finding the technology that suits, suits the purpose and understanding enough about that to make sure that everybody involved is safe. I think one of the other things I was really interested in um, was the idea of your digital footprint or your digital presence and how what we do around our work and what we do in our personal lives 
can sometimes meet in the middle and what the impact of one on the other might be and what sort of things we can do to to take care of that yeah i think when we look at our digital presence uh, it's it's a complex area and perhaps if i can explain a little to you why i think it's complex um we are striving uh, I believe, whether we are counsellors, tutors or students, uh, to be congruent and to represent ourselves in the light that we are. Um, but that also requires appropriateness. So being appropriate at the right time, the right place uh, and those sorts of things. So realistically, from this point onwards in time, if we take this point now and draw a line, everything that exists about us in the digital domain exists. So there's nothing we can do about that. But we do have a level of control uh, and possibly one might consider a level of responsibility for everything that goes into the digital domain from this point onwards. Um, there's often, again, a level of assumption or misunderstanding that closed groups on social media um, are safe spaces to be completely open. Um, but this can lead to cyberbullying, cyberstalking, trolling, and all sorts of different activities. And perhaps one of the reflections is for me, and I'll talk about myself, and people can make their own applications to consider what I am comfortable with being in the public domain, in the digital domain from this point onwards. And can I explain uh, and justify that if required? Thanks, Derek. There's some really useful um, guidance that you've that you've given us there. I wonder if you would be able to just sort of summarise in in your words um, what the what the message that we have for our tutors and students is around e-safety. I think I think to summarise the message around e-safety, um, don't be afraid. And if we take the necessary responsible steps, the correct training, the correct supervision, the correct and appropriate communication and engagement, and put all the safeguards in place that are available to us, um, then we can embrace this and go forward. And it's an opportunity to learn. It's an opportunity to expand and increase our skills. And it's certainly going forward going to be an opportunity to be able to allow many, many more clients to access counselling than ever before. Thanks, Derek. You've really highlighted some important areas for us to think about. And um, we have included some additional resources at the end of this video. So for now, stay safe. <laughs>